Yeah, come on in. Don't be afraid. I won't bite. I won't bite. I feel like a school, school teacher standing here. Like a dictator. With the emphasis on dick. Yeah, probably that's it. Didn't no. <laughs> That's even worse. No. I have a complete audience that wants to see me fail. I I can't disappoint them. I'm gonna wait one more minute because I'm just standing here such relax. <laughs> no. Okay, glass, take it, but no. <laughs> Again, if I do the, this during my presentation, y you know I'll be doing something stupid with my glass. So I guess the doors are closed, so we'll be, uh, we'll be starting. First of all, thank you for actually being here. I have the graveyard shift of this conference, so I'm the last one. Uh, I hope they save the best till last. Um, yeah, come on in. <coughs> well, I, um, I'm going to talk to you about that. Well, first of all, again, thank you uh, for being here. Um, I'm going to talk to you or try to explain something about uh, prototyping for Android applications, but basically you can do it also for, uh, what is it called, Apple, iOS, <laughs> something like that, yeah. Uh, I want to cover, uh, I want to explain you what a prototype is and why you should use it, uh, who is responsible for making these prototypes, and uh, eventually how some good cases on how you create one. And I'm not going to introduce myself first, I just want to know who you are, so, um, by the way, during this presentation, I do ask some questions and I do need some audience participating, so uh, you probably will be awake during this talk. Um, show me some hands if you are an Android developer. And are there some designers out there? Yes! Welcome, my good friends. So basically, all Android developers aren't designers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't be shy. You probably all have done some design. Um, well, that's good to know. Whoever, who, did, who did use some kind of prototyping or use some prototyping skills? Yeah. Oh, why are you here? You know, you know it. Okay, now let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Wiebe Elzinga. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's it's a difficult name. It's uh, it's. I'm from Holland. I work for a company uh, which is called iTunes Mobile. We're a small company which creates mobile applications for uh, Android, of course. We do uh, iOS. I'm sorry, and even mobile web. Uh, it's a child that always is. Uh, yeah, every. I, probably everybody still does does a mobile web, or I hope. Um, I'm also a organizer and a co-founder of the GDG Dutch Android User Group. GDG stands for uh, Google Developer Group. Basically, we try to teach other developers how to do good Android development and basically share knowledge. Uh, so you can imagine I have little to no spare time. But I like to spend it here in Italy. So let's get back to prototyping. Um, First, uh, the main question is, what is a prototype? And um, it sounds like an easy question, like what is a prototype, but uh, for me it was difficult to get a good definition. But after, yes, one year I found out um, it is an early version of an ID you've got. 
And it should, it should also be uh, testable, but more on that later. And a good way to find out if your definition is good is to um, show you some examples and ask you if this is a prototype or not. So, what are these called? Segways, and they're cool. You just lean forward and you go faster. And if you might, if you might see, I'm not the slimmest guy, so I can go really fast on a Segway. Um, it, 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 it was a new way of transport, and it was a novel idea, but it was always it, it was a finished product, so it isn't a prototype. And again, you all know uh, this guy and this product, um, and let's face it, it revolutionized the uh, mobile industry. But when it was introduced, it was already mass produced, so we just uh, threw, uh, we just gave him uh, our money, and we had a cool product. So for me, this isn't a prototype. And neither is this. It's cool. I can protect my face when I'm eating noodles. <laughs> but again, it was a finished product. So now, we're no, now we know what isn't a prototype. Let's give it a good example of what is. Let me introduce Pranav. Pranav was, um, uh, he was at home and he was watching a, a movie and uh, he saw a cool technique and he wanted to recreate it. So again, he, he saw the ID and he wanted to visualize that ID. So he went to Radio Shack, he bought a Beamer, um, some duct tape, and he tried to figure out if the technique he saw was re can be recreated with actual technology. Can anybody name the, vid the movie he saw? Yeah. And actually, he is almost finished. He patented his technology and he, he has a working demo. He has a working prototype. But this is also a prototype. Can you name the product of the prototype? <coughs> Ali, you can't answer all the questions because you know them. No? It's an iPod. Yeah, I don't see uh, 16 gig of music uh, on that on that tape, but it actually is a prototype. Basically, she, basically he or she, I still don't know, uh, wanted to have music while going to work. Yeah. And also, this is a good visualization of a prototype. The stupid thing I'm wearing is actually uh, designed as a prototype, so basically evolved the ID to a finished product. Well, now we know uh, what a prototype is, that raises the question why we should use prototypes. So what's the advantage? Uh, it should answer some questions, like is the product good, is the design good, um, does it work, does, do users know how to work, and maybe generate new ones. Like is it correctly that if I use a sliding menu, it's obvious for users. We had a discussion last night during uh, a couple of beers. Uh, uh, and we got um, basically mad about why you should or shouldn't use the sliding menu. But if we had a prototype, we could have discussed <laughs> if it's handy or not. Also, a prototype allows you to look at some, uh, some solutions and compare um, and explore the different um, alternatives. Is this the best way to use a stylus? Actually, he is on the toilet. You can't see on the picture, but he is actually looking for a direction while on the toilet. Also, a prototype uh, is a good way to have a look if your product is failing. And you don't have to have a finished product, so you can, you can know if the product is failing at an early stage. And it, it is cheaply. Uh, this is a situation from home. Uh, they thought they would create a secure parking lot. Uh, I don't think they succeed. And they had to change the design. And it took, uh, I think, about 10,000 euros to change the design. Well, I don't have 10,000 dollars or euros. So using a prototype is much easier to find out if you save money at the end. 
And these are some, some um, practical um, examples, but we're mobile developers, so let's have a look at some mobile examples. So this is an uh, iPhone application, and normally it asks if you use some kind of navigation to share your location. But really, do I want to share my location to sex offenders? I don't think so. Uh, they change it now, but uh, still, if they did some kind of prototyping, they would have figured out that the name of the application is probably not the best. And I, what I normally try to do is, when I give this talk, to search for a mobile application that is well known in the country. So. I think this is a typical Italian application, am I correct? Are the makers of this application in the room? No? Good. <laughs> now, can, it isn't a bad application, but uh, if you see this screen, what do you think is wrong with this? So you think there's a lot of things wrong with this. Uh, I only found one. No, I found two. Basically, it gives you a sort of style uh, iOS has. And again, during these uh, uh, today, there were two talks uh, basically telling you that iOS is an Android and it shouldn't use, you shouldn't use your iOS design to create your Android application. But actually, for me, the most annoying part is, and I'm, I'm, even though I wear Google glasses, my eyes aren't that good. And this isn't the, really the font to choose, especially if I, my grandmother is using this application, God forbid why, but she's not that handy, but the font is too small. And these are some, some and I, I know it's a childish example, but it is a good example to show that you do need to have some kind of prototyping to check if everything is good. So to summarize, a prototype is a visual ID which you can share with your stakeholders, for instance, your team, but also users. And don't be shy to share it. Basically, basically you have to fake it until you make it. She's doing a good job, right? <laughs> I was scared. When people go crouching at my, at my seat, I, I'm scared. By the way, do you know the, what the character name is? St yes, Steve what? No, Ali Steve Urkel, yeah, and do you know why he's so famous? Because he's the first televised nerd. And come on, we're all nerds, yeah. Besides the designers, of course, they are cool. <laughs> um, so, I had a discussion when I was in Germany with a designer who I'm not naming. And we had a discussion who is responsible for creating the prototype. And because there are some designers in the room, I think it's a good discussion. So a normal person would think that uh, the interaction design and the visual design are responsible for the prototype, right? Does any, oh, Mark, what do you think? Who is more, who more is responsible for creating a prototype? Yeah, so even the programmer or the developer does have a say in, in the design. So the designer I talked to uh, disagreed, but then again, she's a designer, so it's her job. Uh, but also, the customer itself has some sort of responsibility when it comes to uh, creating prototypes. And most of the customers don't know how an actual mobile application should, be, should look like but knows the business value of that application. So I can create an awesome application, a good design with a good, good prototype. But if the, the, the customer isn't happy, he pays for it. So also the customer has a good say in uh, how the actual design looks like. So what makes a good prototype? Well. It actually comes down to just four steps. It should be quick and easy to make. Uh, with a minimal effort, uh, it should be cheap. And for me, even more important, it should be testable. Um, and before we continue, I do need to, f <laughs> yeah, 
I need to set something straight. There are uh, two types of prototypes which you can use. Uh, the experimental one, basically you have no idea what you want to create uh, and you just free format, brainstorm, whatever the hell you think you want to create and something cool comes out, like Google Glass. Um, but you don't have any boundaries, you don't have any questions prior to creating the prototype. Uh, that is more the technical way of creating prototypes, which basically you have a problem which you want to solve, you have an idea and you want to visualize that idea into a sort of a product, namely the prototype. So I'm talking about this. And also, um, I need to ask you, where do you think exactly a prototype should be made during the development process? Normally I would just walk from left to right, but I'm lazy, I'm, I, it's a good position here. So just shout out where you think where a prototype should be made. And now everybody's quiet. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm gonna walk. S say stop when you think a prototype should be created. <laughs> I will continue. Stop. In the planning? After, I don't hope you're here. But actually, and I'm going to go back to the mic, actually, um, it's a little trick question because throughout the development process, a prototype should be made, should be changed, should be updated. The reason why is if I create a prototype and I'm using some sort of a planning process like Scrum or extreme programming, uh, the application is evolved during that process. So if I start a sprint and, I, and the customer says, well, I want to have some kind of uh, share possibility and I created um, a prototype with a share button and it goes to Facebook. And at the end of the sprint, a new sprint is planned and the customer says, well, um, we decided not to use the sharing option because uh, of security reasons. So I have to change my prototype. So a prototype is evolving during the development process. Even at the end, when you're almost done, uh, there are still some minor tweaks that you have to do for your prototype. And this is really important. If you disagree, uh, fine. That's your opinion, I have mine. <laughs> Mark. So let's start by creating a prototype and what kind of tools you can use. Now, first we have to do uh, is uh, plan, of course. What we normally do is we define user stories. Who doesn't know what user stories are? And don't be shy to raise your hands. <laughs> okay, no, no biggie. No, but no. A user story mainly is a high-level definition of the actual thing you want to use. Let me give you some example. Uh, let's say a user story is I, I just want to see where I am on a map. I don't have to write a, a lot of specification for that. It's just the, 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 the core functionality I have to create or which needs to be in the application, thus needs to be in the prototype. If you just write this down on a piece of paper with your customer and don't be shy to if, uh, um, visit the customer and ask him, well, what should the application be doing and write it down and he says, yeah, that's about it. Uh, life would, is, is so much easier. So if you have those user stories, you can identify the task, uh, how to create the uh, user story, for instance. So if I want to see where I am on a map, I do, I do need to create a map, I need to show a map, and I need to show my current location. Uh, then create a user uh, overflow diagram. This gives you an overview of uh, uh, all the user story your prototype needs to have and how they work together. And uh, this can be done by way of nifty tools, but using a whiteboard is sufficient enough. Again, it does, doesn't, we just want a cheap way to use prototypes. Well, then the cool uh, stuff happens. We create some rough interface screens, and it's a good visualization method of um, all the screens the application or the prototype should have. And uh, the discussion starts here. 
because if you create those rough interfaces, you actually have some kind of visual working application. Although it's static, but it still shows you the actual visualization of the ID. If we have that, we're going to do what we do best. We're going to build it. And again, we're building a prototype, not an application. So, uh, no code. Keep that in mind. Uh, some good ways of uh, building your prototype is by way of using UI stencils. Uh, it's cheap. Uh, and you can create high fidelity uh, mock ups, high fidelity screens. But can you imagine if I create a a screen and the button should be not on the left but on the right. I have to throw away the paper and start over again. Talking about paper, there, um, if you just sketch some mock-ups, uh, you will be missing the interaction the user have, uh, uh, has to be doing in order to see the actual application. So you can use, uh, for instance, what Expedia um, uses. Uh, they buy a camera, they film a lot, and it looks a little bit like this. Well, it gives you more inter interaction between the different screens. But now imagine you have 50 screens. How many, f how many hours of tape do you think you need? Again, it should be quick and easy to make. If you think with like five screens this is uh, efficient, use it. As long as you do something with prototyping. So now the most common uh, used uh, technique is um, use some sort of templating like Photoshop or uh, yeah, Photoshop I think is the most popular out there. Uh, the problem is I'm not really a Photoshop expert. So if I start using Photoshop, I first need to have a some kind of work in uh, some kind of period where I need to learn Photoshop. So after one month, I can finally create my prototype. Uh, and my boss and me doesn't have all that uh, huge budget, so probably isn't the best. If you're a designer, probably you know this tool, right? Yeah. Do you use uh, Photoshop? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> then it's much easier to do because they, they probably know the tool. And there are templates out there which you can use, even on the, on the uh, original developer uh, side from Android and the design side from there, you can just download it and use it. So if you don't have the high learning curve, it's okay. What we use is a library called Kinotopia, and I'm not selling Kinotopia. I really don't give a damn if you use Kinotopia or not. But Kinotopia for me is easy because you, it's just a library with, uh, with components you can use with PowerPoint or Keynote. And everybody knows PowerPoint or Keynote. And if you're not, you're, it's not rocket science. So I just drag components in and I can create an awesome prototype. But the cool thing is, if I create a hyperlink between a button and the next screen in, in Keynote, I can export that Keynote into a clickable PDF and I can buy for uh, one euro an application which runs on my Android or my iOS device and I install the clickable PDF and I actually have a testable application, a testable prototype. And if you don't believe me, I'm just showing you. Again, this, there's no code in, in this. It's just a PowerPoint presentation or a keynote presentation. And for me, this looks sort of like a finished product. Nice hand model, by the way. And as you may notice, and we're at DroidCon and we're Android based, it is an Android device. It is an iPad, I'm sorry for that. The reason why the library of Kinotopia is still in their final approval phase, but you can download it and use it. There is a slight fee, but it is like 40 euros. And uh, how much is the license for Photoshop? <sighs> that much? <sighs> yeah. Ta -ding! Yeah. So this is much cheaper. And again, uh, I can go to a customer, I can sh uh, um, 
give him a device which runs my prototype and he can play with it without breaking, without fucking up and I can easily create or change my prototype because I have my laptop running PowerPoint and I can change it and I can export it again and he can run it again. So cheap, easy, minimal and even testable. Well, uh, you can use uh, in the cloud options. There are really much uh, uh, frameworks out there which basically you can create your prototype uh, in the cloud in a web portal and you can uh, easily share to a customer that isn't around. So if you're creating an application for somebody in Singapore, just send them the link to your prototype and you can actually uh, use it. And again, as I mentioned, there are a lot of possibilities which you can use to create your prototype. Uh, a popular one is Balsamic for people that do iOS and Android. Um, and every time I do this talk, and by the way, it's the final time I do this talk. I have been doing this talk for two years and I'm just fed up with the presentation. <coughs> And every time people come to me at the end of the presentation, hey, do you know this test framework? Do you know this prototype framework you can use? Uh, no, I don't know all. But uh, give them a try and find out what works for you. As long as it works for you, I'm happy. And probably your customers are happy as well. So now we build it and I think we need some sort of testing if your prototype is good. But basically you're just testing your design, your visualization. Uh, one of the things you have to do is make different kind of prototypes. Um, the reason why is you can test um, uh, if the, your choice of prototype is good. Is it actually... there's um, it is difficult to create just one application which you think it's cool and you show to the customer and the customer says, well, I'm, that's fine. It, ne it almost never happens. There's always some sort of discussion. But if you do create several prototypes, stay true to your user story. Because in this case, I can create different mugs, but I have to be true to the user story that the mug has to uh, maintain the water. Also, uh, don't be afraid for feedback um, and choosing the right users for uh, asking for feedback is important. I don't mind showing my prototype to my wife or to my mother, uh, but most of the time they aren't the, the, the target audience for my application. But don't be afraid of what they have to say as long as you listen to the right uh, end user. So for instance, a good example is uh, most of the Android developers do have their settings of their mobile phone to English, um, but that's unique. Basically, we are the weird ones because most people have their uh, language settings of their mobile phone to the current, current country they're living in. By the way, do, who doesn't have their phone set to English? Do you have it set to Italy? Italian? So I'm just the weird one out. Yeah. Okay. I'm not the only weird guy out there. <coughs> Again, listen to feedback, but listen to the right feed. Uh, use the right uh, feedback from the right user. And if you have those feedback, it's a good way to discuss these results of your prototype with your customer. Actually, uh, from this picture, who thinks he can spot the customer. Yeah, and who's the designer? On the left or on the right? On the left, exactly. It's so funny, every time uh, there's a discussion and every time everybody picks out the customer and the designer. So this, discuss the result with your stakeholders, with your end users. And if you have those, uh, if they do have complaints, refine your prototype without actually ever uh, write code. So it's, it's easy to change your prototype, or it should be easy. And refine your prototype until the customer is happy. So if you refine it, you have to test it again, and redefine it and test it again until everybody's happy. Or until the money is up, and then you're out of luck. 
As in, uh, at the beginning of the presentation, I was telling uh, you about sharing. By the way, I do love this picture. His brother won't share the drink with him. Um, you have to share your prototype. You, you, it, it doesn't mind if you show it to your wife. It's not a, a big secret. Um, that's not entirely to you. If you're making a banking application, probably there um, are, are some secret parts are during your prototyping of, or from your prototype that should not be visible to anybody. But don't hesitate to share your application. You don't have to write a, a lot of specification uh, to create a prototype. And you just have to just go out and play with it. It's, it, it is easy. I'm, I'm not a rocket scientist again. Um, I'm, I'm looking at Mark before the jokes. I'm sorry. Um, and I can easily create a prototype. And um, it should be... It, it should be fun, right? As writing code is, but it isn't fun when you write code and the customer says, well, this isn't what I expected. You have to rewrite it. And throwing away a prototype and creating a new one, well, who cares? It's no biggie. So to sum up, if you do want to ha use prototyping, you have to plan, you have to create your user stories, and you have to refine your task. Uh, go out and build your prototype with every, with uh, a, a, a tool which you think is the best for you. Uh, test your prototype with your users, but please uh, listen to the right users. Refine your prototype, test it again, and basically share your findings and your application. And probably because this is the last talk of the day, you all are tired, so forget everything I have to say and just remember a picture is worth a thousand words and a prototype is worth a thousand pictures. And I do have time. Either I can uh, open the mic for answers or I can show you a cool demonstration of live prototyping. Yeah! <laughs> so let me explain, so I'll skip the questions for maybe later. So I give you a case. I was in um, Ankara last year, and uh, I was traveling from one conference to another. And it was early. We were tired. We were sitting. We were five people sitting in a car, and the driver was doing like 200 kilometers per hour. So what do you do? You decided to do some live prototyping, and we wanted to create a classical game called Point. But we had some kind of uh, boundaries. For instance, the driver is doing 200 kilometers per hour and was refusing to stop. It was a woman. No, it was a man. A good man, but impatient. Um, and we didn't have much stuff in the car. Uh, we had a, pen, a piece of paper and a pen, and we had this, car, this guy. So how, how can you create a game? Well, you have to have some visualization of the uh, game played. So we stuck a iPhone onto the window, under f the, the, the driver window, so he can record our, our try for the prototype. We thought, well, we need some kind of score, so we know if we're winning or losing. We need animation. We even have sound effects. Well, shall I show you what the re end result is? Enjoy. Wait, wait, wait. 
I do need to, to interrupt before the final. Every time he says boop, 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 I thought that he was saying boobies. <laughs> and it took, it, no, it took me a while to figure out what he was saying. So you probably will see me at the end uh, figuring out what he actually was saying. <laughs> And the spoiler is we had a stack overflow at the end. <laughs> but this gives you a good example that even with minimal tools you can actually make a prototype which basically visualize the, the game you want to create. And I think I have five more minutes. So if you want to see her run, you can ask questions to me. No, no questions. Come on, guy. Yeah. Oh, oh, she needs, she needs to run. <laughs> Did you actually end up making a game with boobies? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It's just an experiment, but it's it it was fun to do. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It wasn't a real question. No, never mind. I'm always happy. <laughs> and the fun thing is, not when you leave, in your head it goes. <laughs> Ali. Hi. Hi. Uh, it was a great presentation, but um, we got a very important question. What What do you do if customers don't want to have prototyping in in the whole thing? What if they go like, yeah, we don't want to pay for this, we don't want to have the time for this? Okay, that's a good question. What we uh, and you know the answer. Uh, I know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it it is difficult, and I get this question a, a lot because uh, basically you're spending a little bit of the budget on creating an application to creating the prototype first. Um, I think in the end, uh, it's the belief that you think uh, you're doing the right thing, and if you explain them well, it's not. It won't cost you that much. But it will save you a lot of grief and a lot of uh, misinterpretation uh, by creating a prototype. And if you still doesn't believe, do a what we do like an open session, which you can sit down with your customer and scribble something down. And basically, that's sort of a pro uh, way of doing prototypes. And if you like it, you can say, well, let's elaborate on the prototype. Let us give us one more day, and we create some awesome clickable prototype for you. And most of the time, the customer says, well, okay. And if it's not, it's his fault. Either you can say just, then we don't want the contract, or uh, it's up to you and, uh, yeah, piss off. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. I, will, uh, I will think about that yeah. and uh, apply, <laughs> apply that at our company. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. You all are tired. Mm, I'm gonna take a picture of you guys. <laughs> I have evidence right now. Yes. Oh, you're in luck. You don't have to run that 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 much today. Well, uh, again, grazie. Oh, that's so cool. You're so nice. Every time. No, what I normally try to do at the end of a presentation is say something in the native language. And most of the time, I get this reaction. Uh. <laughs> so I'm happy everybody just reacts. <laughs> now go out and have some beer. Or no, go to the closing uh, presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.